the Pac-10 Conference had an entertaining brand of football in the 90s. Unfortunately, during the summer of 2023, harsh news spread about several teams leaving the conference. For me, the top Pac-10 memories, Arizona's Desert Swarm defense, the 1992 Apple Cup in the snow with Washington State upset blowout, the 1996 Arizona State Sun Devils season with Jake Plummer, and an entertaining game with Washington State's Ryan Leaf and UCLA's K. McNown to open the season in 1997. But there is one Pac-10 item I had to do a video on, as it involves one of my favorite teams ever, the 2000 Oregon State Beavers, and in this video, I also need to mention about Notre Dame privilege and a Pac-10 threat to the BCS. So to begin, Leading up to Oregon State's entertaining 2000 season, Mike Riley was the coach of the Beavers in 1997 and 1998 as the team showed improvement with running back Ken Simonton bursting onto the scene as a freshman. Riley laid the foundation for what was to come, but he left after the 98 season to become the head coach of the San Diego Chargers. Then in 1999, in came Dennis Erickson as in 1999, Oregon State Beavers finished at 7-5 their first winning season since 1970. So enter the 2000 college football season. Several key players were coming back, but Oregon State started the season unranked. The Beavers were explosive with Erickson's three wide receiver set, with the aforementioned Ken Simonton, walk-on quarterback Jonathan Smith, who was the Beavers head coach from 2018 to 2023, but then left for Michigan State, and then a pair of NFL wide receivers in TJ Hushmanzada and Chad Johnson. It seemed Hushman Zada was one getting targeted more than Johnson, and Hushman Zada, he was also the team's punt returner. Then on defense, Oregon State, they were fast and aggressive. OSU, they started the season at 4-0, then would crack the top 25 after their victory versus USC. However, for their next game, the Beavers lost at Washington by three points as Oregon State, they missed a 46-yard field goal with 14 seconds left. But for Oregon State's final six games of the regular season, the team that wore awesome black and orange uniforms, they looked impressive. Oregon State, they finished the regular season at 10-1 and, and led the Pac-10 in scoring offense and scoring defense. To finish off the regular season, there was a three-way tie for the Pac-10 title with Oregon State, Oregon, and Washington. Each of those teams, they beat each other. As the one who was chosen to play in the Rose Bowl was Washington due to a point system with their wins. So what bowl would the fifth ranked Beavers play in? What came next was extremely interesting to me at the time. Back then with the BCS, the bowl championship series, there were four major bowls. As the six qualifying conferences, they would get an automatic bid with their conference champion, meaning there were two at-large spots open. As for Notre Dame, who was an independent, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe all that Notre Dame had to do back then was rank in the top 12 of the final BCS standings to qualify for BCS consideration. Now, of course, because it's Notre Dame, if they qualified for a BCS Bowl, they were going to be chosen no matter what. I loved Oregon State football, but in reality, with their history and other items, they are a college football program that is hard to sell. Back then, some teams would lobby certain bowl committees to persuade these committees that their program deserves a BCS Bowl game. Pac-10 Commissioner Tom Hansen, he went a different route as he threatened to have the Pac-10 leave the BCS. Apparently the Pac-10 was tired of being snubbed from major college bowl games. Perhaps the threat worked. As a result, it wound up being Notre Dame versus Oregon State in the Fiesta Bowl. Meanwhile, many thought it was unfair that Notre Dame got a BCS Bowl bid over Virginia Tech, who was ranked fifth in the BCS standings ahead of Oregon State and Virginia Tech, they were ranked 6th in the AP poll behind Oregon State. But many thought Virginia Tech, who had Michael Vick, was hosed and snubbed and didn't think Notre Dame deserved a BCS Bowl game. Okay, so on to the Fiesta Bowl. Oregon State, explosive offensively and fast and aggressive on defense, going up against Notre Dame, who was a simple Midwest team that didn't turn the ball over, a punt is a good thing, and played very conservatively. So with this matchup, the final score was 41-9, but it seemed to be much worse than that. It really wasn't that close. OSU, they could have easily put up 80 points. This was such a mismatch. 
Now somehow, it was 12 to three at halftime, as Oregon State, they nearly outgamed Notre Dame by 200 yards just in the first half, as it seemed that Oregon State was toying with Notre Dame. It felt like almost every offensive play Notre Dame ran ended up in negative yardage. But then the second half began, Oregon State, they quickly scored four touchdowns in less than eight minutes, as this was how the game was supposed to go. The most memorable touchdown for me during this game was when Chad Johnson scored on a long reception and actually dropped the ball before it crossed the goal line. But the TD, it counted anyways, as this was the first time I ever saw that happen, as players dropping the ball before they cross the goal line has happened numerous times since. But back to the game. This was the biggest mismatch in a bowl game I could remember. That 41-9 score should have been much worse, but maybe Oregon State's 18 penalties had something to do with it. But anyways, there was the thought that this 2000 Oregon State Beavers team might be the best team in the country. In 2000, it was Florida State, who was the one lost team that got to play in the Orange Bowl for the national championship, but lost to Oklahoma. I love the bowl season and the bowl games. I know it wasn't perfect for determining a national champion, but I loved waking up and watching hours upon hours of college football. But for the 2000 college football season, this is one season where I wish there was a 12-team playoff because perhaps Oregon State was the best team in 2000. As someone who loved Conference USA basketball and WAC football and basketball, it's crazy to see how much those conferences have changed. My CUSA and WAC, they are so different now. As the ones I feel worse for are the fans, Oregon State and Washington State, who are the two teams left behind from the Pac-12 conference, weren't the premier programs in the conference in premier television markets. They were the two football programs I liked the most in the conference and were able to be competitive at times despite their resources. But for the great fans in Corvallis, Oregon and Pullman, Washington, I feel for you. I had such great memories watching your football programs. Real quick, I just want to thank all those who have supported 90 Sports Nostalgia. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, and check out the links below for Patreon. Thank you so much. The 2000 Oregon State Beavers.